Hey everybody, uh, we are here doing our stratagem tier lists for bugs, tier 9, 4 player co-op. Uh, we're gonna go through S through trolling, but just do remember that, you know, easily every single stratagem can go up or down depending on play style. And if you feel like I've missed something, feel free to comment down below. Also, you can check out the Twitch stream. Uh, I will be like constantly streaming this game all the time. So come drop by and you can tell me what you think about uh, these different things. And we can have a solid conversation about it because I'm trying to fit everything down into 30 seconds to a minute for each stratagem. I can't cover everything or I might forget something since I'm doing this in one take. So starting off here, we're going to start with the orbitals uh, just because we have it right here. Uh, we have the Gatling, um, Gatling Barrage. Uh, I think it's a C plus b minus kind of stratagem pick uh i wish it had more duration i like that it has a pretty little cooldown so as far as orbitals go you can use it quite a bit but its impact is not great for hell dives just because it can't really mess with chargers too much and it can't really mess with bile titans all too much uh i wish it could maybe track a target or last longer so i could put it on a bug breach and it actually has more utilization so I think it's a solid B minus C plus. We're gonna put it here for now at the start of the uh, tier list, but it might change. Uh, Orbital Airburst I think is a solid to great choice uh, for bug breaches in particular. Using it on a uh, bug breach that has just opened up, you know, trying to put it a little bit towards you so enemies have the opportunity to like walk forward into it is quite strong. Uh, Individual barrages will take out multiple waves. I've easily seen airstrikes themselves take out entire uh, hatcheries all by themselves, just putting it right in the center. The airburst can do a fantastic job at that. And it doesn't suffer from the uh, the problem that the cluster bog has as far as getting inside those high walls of some of the nests. So really like it. Really easy strategy to use. Just three right arrows. Uh, would recommend trying it out. And it's even useful in the orbital scatter modifier because in a way, it makes it less accurate, which gives it a larger uh, radius, so it can actually do more damage sometimes. So, would recommend. Orbital 120, I think, is a solid B choice, especially now that nests are more useful like, uh, for your overall liberation percentage. Uh, solid choice, quite useful, not too high of a radius, so you can kind of throw it towards a bug breach, and a lot of the shots won't just completely miss, like its older brother, the 380. I like the 380, but it's very much an RNG machine. Uh, if you are a gambling man or woman, you will probably like it a lot more than I do. But I just don't like how long the cooldown is. Both barrages suffer from four-minute cooldowns or just below because of the uh, the ship module. I I just I wish it was a lower cooldown. I don't mind that it's super inaccurate at times because you know it's fun to use and it can absolutely one shot a bile titan if you get fairly lucky it's good versus eradicate missions but for your average mission it doesn't quite have that same level of density in a large area so i can't give it total high marks especially with its high cooldown so i hope you understand walking barrage i put in c uh since the changes to it i found that unless you see enemies like 200 meters away from you plus walking towards you in a nice straight line or so it's not super useful. You'll throw it towards a location, and yeah, it'll like keep doing that barrage in that location. But man, do a lot of shots just do nothing because it's so into the distance, right? Oh, mo like more than half the barrage probably won't be anywhere near the bugs that you care about. You almost need to throw it like a hundred meters and have a hundred meters of bugs walking towards you in a straight line. It feels very niche because of that. I almost feel like they need to shorten the overall length and then allow more shots to be like saturating an area, and then it would be very good. Orbital Laser, I think, is a solid A choice. The reason why I don't put it any higher is because it kind of gets stuck on Chargers and Bile Titans, uh, and it doesn't kill a Bile Titan super efficiently unless you can help it by shooting the underbelly uh, of a Bile Titan to kind of, you know, assist it or cracking open a Bile Titan so it can do more damage due to the armor now missing. Um, I still really like the laser for general ad clears. If you have a ton of like tier one to three bugs in front of you, it's fantastic. But unfortunately, it takes too long to kill a charger and too long to kill a bile titan. So I don't believe it uh, deserves to be that S rank like it does in bot missions. Smoke overall, I think, is very much a, a C tier niche pick. I could see someone utilizing it in like some niche scenarios, but it is very unimpressive for like general like four player co-op 
Uh, someone's going to alert the enemies, so you can't really use it for stealth. You can kind of use it to help you lose targets that are trailing you a little faster. But Orbital Precision almost deserves to be in blats here because I've noticed that when I've dropped it, there's like holes in it that the uh, Eagle Airstrike does not have. It seems to be more of a uniform line. Uh, Orbital Rail, I think, is like a solid S minus A plus uh, category. And the reason why that is, is because you're going to be usually utilizing it versus really just Bile Titans in tier nine. It's basically a complete waste to use it versus a charger because you're just going to see so many charges on average that you're probably just going to want to save it for a Bile Titan. And when you use it on the Bile Titan, although it usually doesn't one shot, just take out the stomach right afterwards and 90% of the time they die. If they don't, just shoot into like basically their shoulder blade on the side that it hits and uh, you will get a really fast TTK with it. You can even blow up the stomach first, then throw it, kills it. So very good orbital stratagem, just a long cooldown. So I don't recommend using it against chargers unless you know you just need to kill that charger. Orbital precision is like middle A, but unfortunately received a decent nerf technically with the nerf to the stun grenade. It used to be like high A, because you could just stun a Bile Titan, then use this on a 90 second cooldown to eliminate uh, a Bile Titan. You can still do that, other than the fact that you can't stun the Bile Titan. You have to Matador, so getting it to do like the pincer attack or getting it to puke, uh, and then like placing it in a good spot and you don't have the 50% call in time are all important things to utilize for this. But if you see a patrol walking in front of you, you can in fact just like stun it. You know, with, let's say there's a charger in it, maybe two chargers and a bunch of hunters. You can throw it on a patrol. It can eliminate a patrol straight up. So that's why it deserves to be an A. Orbital Gas has a problem at the moment where it doesn't affect all enemies. Uh, I think for that reason, it either deserves to be in blah or C tier. Uh, if you guys don't have or haven't come across it, damage over time effects are not affecting all bug enemy types at the moment. So if you are not host, the Orbital Gas, for instance, can't kill a charger. If you're the host, it can affect the charger and then it will die within about a minute or so. It will fall over and die. But if you're not host, it'll just sit there bleeding out indefinitely. Go try it for yourself. I highly recommend. Uh, it doesn't have to do with PS5 or PC. It's just if you are the host or not the host. Um, so yeah, keep that in mind. Uh, if they fix it, I think it would be like middle B for just dropping on a bug breach. But the thing is, is it doesn't have much duration. And it doesn't have much effective radius. So if multiple bug breaches spawn at the same time point like spawn point it might not affect all of them which is quite unfortunate uh orderly ems i think is very similar to it uh i wish it was a little bit more useful as far as maybe like a lower cooldown or a larger effective radius i feel like if you want to use the ems strike you're most likely just going to use the ems mortar which has basically like triple the uptime overall uh, although with a small negative of it chooses where it wants to go I like the idea of the orbital EMS, but I quickly put it away when I unlock the EMS mortar for those like defense missions or just like general gameplay with bugs. Decent, but it's very niche. Okay, going into Eagles. Uh, first, we have the strafing run. I think it's very black. Uh, until they give it like armor pen uh, or like maybe it maybe functions a little bit closer to the 110 millimeter rocket strike where it's... Uh, more like a like like an A10 swooping in and doing a burr, you know, and then it would like charge or like pick a charger or pick a, a ball time to shoot at. I think it'd be really cool if it did that, but it doesn't at the moment. It just does a strafing run in an area, which is kind of cool, but I've noticed way too many enemies survive this. Although it's on a short cooldown, I just feel like you're better off using the other alternatives for general ad clear. So please, please give this some kind of like armor pen buff or something like that. I think it could be really good and fun to use. Uh, let's go into the obvious cluster strike. I, I think it's like so hard not to put this as like top tier, S tier. It's just so good. Incredible uptime. Really good tier one to tier three ad clear. Although it can't really deal with charges super effectively. It technically can if enough uh, fall behind it. Um, and it takes out Bile Spears. It takes out literally every bug, but a Charger and a Bile Titan reliably. It's fantastic, and you can just chuck them out. Just be careful of where your teammates are positioned. It has a very large radius, which is both a good thing and a bad thing for your teammates. Eagle Airstrike, I think, is also an A-tier pick. It is kind of like a Swiss Army knife, more so, because it can take out Chargers more reliably. It can take out Bug Holes more reliably. Uh, 
That being said, you can take out bug holes with the cluster strike. It's just very unlikely. Uh, and it's just a general ad clear machine. It has a good radius, not as high as the cluster, but because it can utilize more of like more different enemy types, it's quite strong. And if you can catch a ball titan as it's coming out of the ground, it can do a ton of damage to it. Uh, but you just have to get that timing right. It's very unlikely to happen, but hey, it can happen. Uh, Napalm Strike uh, has the same issue as Gas Strike at the moment with the dot damage, but at least it has more usage, so higher uptime, and it has a longer duration overall. Uh, I'm going to put this in like middle B, B minus. I think it would be higher with the buffs to fire damage, maybe B plus, uh, if they fix the dot damage problem. Uh, but until then, I would say B, B minus. Uh, smoke, Eagle Smoke, I'm going to put in like C plus. It's a little bit better than the other smoke because it's more uniform and you get two uses of it, but it suffers from just like stealth in a uh, tier nine bugs typically doesn't work and it's very niche for running away. You know, I'd rather just throw a cluster behind me rather than throw a orbital smoke in that regard. Uh, one ten millimeter rocket barrage, I think is like an A minus. It's fairly good uh, at killing things. I do like it, but there's inconsistency issues, and I feel like most people are not going to go out of their way to make sure it hits consistently. So just for those who are wondering, it comes from behind you at a 45 degree angle, and it picks a target within a radius. If it if you're throwing it at a charger, you kind of want to make sure the charger is either not charging at you at the time or is about to hit a wall or something like that so it can reliably hit it. The second part is for a Bile Titan, because the spread is so wide on the Eagle, if the Bile Titan is facing towards you, the, a lot of the missiles will hit the side and not really connect very well. A lot of them will miss. So what you actually want to try and do is while it's attacking a friend perpendicularly, you know, you're facing it perpendicularly, you can throw the Eagle and it will more reliably do all the damage and do a ton of damage to a Bile Titan. But you just need to have that more perpendicular 45 degree angle to a Bile Titan to give it more of an opportunity to land all the rockets on the target rather than straight on if it ends straight on, it's going to be quite ineffective the majority of the time. 500 kg is an obvious S tier. Like it, it's just the Bile Titan killer king. As long as you are someone that can utilize the Matador tactics or is very good at predicting where a Bile Titan is about to go, it's fantastic. Uh, what I recommend is trying to get the Bile Titan to do the pincer attack. So blowing up his stomach and then getting him to do a pincer attack for the 500 kg right below him, it'll kill him. Because the animation is long enough that the call in time, as long as you don't have the 50% increased cooldown, it's fantastic. Um, another really good way to do it is if they're spitting at you, throw it like in front of them as they're about to spit at you. And as they finish the spitting, they'll walk over it uh, and kill them. Very strong. Very strong. Okay, going into the centuries now, I think the shield generator overall is like a blat tier. I know there is some niche situations where like you can hide from ball spitters from it and like a charger can run into it and like stun themselves and then you can use like your support weapon after that or like a ball titan can walk up to you and like kill themselves if they spit into it but it's very hard to make work consistently i just i feel like this is for a, a very particular type of person and on top of that they need to fix the duration it's really short and the lifetime or the life of it is very low it doesn't survive much uh, especially if you've been playing on the automaton front. It doesn't lie, uh, live nearly as long as you want it to. The next thing I want to go into is the Tesla Tower. I think it's like somewhere in the C tier. Uh, it's okay. Niche, uh, you can put it in some really cool spots. Like if you remember the silo mission that we had to do for that major order, you know, you could put it on some really high cliffs pretty regularly on that mission and it could do a ton of damage. Also, because the silo had so much aggro, they would tend to like not run towards the uh, Tesla Tower and they would kind of ignore it. But the problem is in like regular tier nine missions, any any charger that spawns within 100 meters or any Bile Titan is just going to walk over to it and kill it. Yeah, that's pretty useful, but I'd rather it use another century that does more effective means of ad clearing while also doing that. So until the Tesla Tower can survive maybe like a charger attack or something like that, I can't put it any higher. Uh, uh, AT Mines, I think, is like a blah tier. I could see someone enjoying it, but it team kills so often, even if you tell your teammates where you've positioned it, because heavy snow and stuff like that hide the mines. 
deep sand, hide the mines. So you could easily walk into a minefield and not know it, killing your teammates. On top of that, other stratagems destroy the mines very regularly. Just the other day, someone threw down a minefield. Almost immediately, a mortar sentry blew up almost half the mines because one enemy walked in, died to it, and the mortar just blew it up. Cluster bombs can do that too. Lots of stratagems can. It's blah. Reduce the root uh, cooldown, and maybe we'll put it higher or something along those lines. Uh, Adrian G emplacement, I think, is a fun stratagem. It's not very useful, though, in the vast majority of situations. Like, I, I find that you're better off just using a Gatling sentry and shooting your regular weapon at the same time. You give up so much potential damage because you are the one shooting it. Although you can pick some very useful things, I don't love the fact that uh, you have to give up so much in that regard. So just keep that in mind. And I hope that uh, they maybe give it some higher pen or more ammo or let it turn faster because you're just very vulnerable also while you're on it. Incendiary mines are trolling at the moment. As I talked about earlier, the dot damage is not working properly. If they fix it, I'd probably put it right next to the other mines, but they need to fix the dot damage bug for me to want to put it in more situations. I do like the idea of it. I love that it got the fire buff. It would probably go even higher than normal AT mines, but it runs into the same issues and it has a bug that is associated with it at the moment. Uh, the machine gun century is not a bad choice. I want to put it like B minus. Uh, it's, it just gets absolutely annihilated by its older brother as far as ad clear, but it at least can kill quite a few things. And, and you can kind of like alternate between them. If you're doing like some kind of sentry build, it can kill light enemy, uh, or like light enemy units. And I think even up to medium tier, uh, so it does have that, but it just doesn't have the, um, overall ammo capacity. The Gatling sentry has quite a bit more ammo capacity. Uh, and it has higher damage per second because it fires faster. So I would much prefer you use the Gatling over the machine gun unless you're doing some kind of, you know, bug build where you are like sentry uh, spamming, right? Uh, the normal mortar, I think, is like an A minus B plus kind of stratagem. Uh, I'm going to put it in B plus just for the moment, just because uh, too many bugs will come at you too fast. And usually it'll start team killing your teammates because... You know, the bugs are going to run up to your teammates. Your teammates are going to kill them. They might advance forward a little bit. They're dead. Unless you're being very conscious about telling your teammates, yo, you need to make sure that you are being careful and constantly running backwards if you kill the bug because the sentry might indiscriminately kill you. Um, also, mortars lost a little bit because the eradication missions are kind of crazy. Um, you can't use them as effectively on eradication missions. It's nice to spawn camp some, but let's be honest, the vast majority of eradicate missions are going to be chaotic as heck. And uh, very quickly, it'll start team killing your teammates more than even a barrage. I would probably recommend using a barrage in a rocket mission over a mortar because at least it'll kill a bunch of bile titans and stuff on the way. Autocan Sentry, I think, is an easy A. It's a great choice. Uh, it can deal with a lot of things. Uh, it's probably closer to an A minus just because it lost the stun capability that it once had. I really liked it before because you could run stun grenades with the auto cannon, and if a bile titan or charger decided it really didn't like that auto cannon, you would just like stun it, and the auto cannon would just kill it within a couple bursts. But unfortunately, at the moment, it uh, it doesn't have that, so you got to be positioning it well and away far from the enemies, so it has time to kill them before it happens. Uh, or you can help support it killing it uh, a little bit sooner. Uh, rocket broad or rocket century is like a middle B to like a little bit uh, ahead of the mortar century. I like it. It has a lot of ammo and it does a lot of armor killing, but it just does it a lot slower. It shoots on average two missiles per shot and it doesn't have nearly as much stagger as the auto cannon. So enemies just kind of run up to it and kill it unless you can protect it. And it's not as easy as protecting an auto cannon because it's not really protecting itself in that regard. EMS Mortar, I think, sits right next to the auto cannon sentry. Uh, it doesn't have the team killing capabilities of the mortar while having a ton of utility. You can place it as a bug breach is coming in and it can kind of just stun lock a breach in front of you if you've placed it and there aren't a lot of patrols coming from other angles. Uh, it'll just sit there stunning bile titans, chargers, everything in between. Uh, just the unfortunate part is that because bugs tend to separate uh, on a lot of hell dive missions, you won't always get the most effectiveness out of it because the radius is not actually like super big. But at least it's constantly firing because that is a huge ammo supply. Okay, 
Going into backpacks, I want to put the shield gen probably like S minus A plus. I think I'm just going to sit it closer to S minus. It's not 100% necessary on bug missions, especially now that the Baal Spewers aren't dealing as much damage. But for someone that's just starting off at Helldive, it's invaluable at like cutting down the amount of deaths that you may have. Um, also, I want to put it more towards A plus at the moment, just because because they've reduced the problems with explosive damage insta-killing you. Yes, everybody's noticed it for Devastators, but it also affects Bile Spewers and uh, uh, Bile Titans as well because they deal explosive damage. So you're going to notice that you're probably going to survive in a lot more situations where you felt like you needed the Shield Generator before. I played quite a few Bile Spear missions today, and I think I died to one Mortar in the entire mission, which was kind of crazy, and I didn't have a Shield Generator on. Whereas in previous missions... And by the way, mortars were landing very consistently, very close to me, but they were doing maybe like half my health and damage. I was wearing light armor. Just saying. Very interesting. Uh, next, I want to do the laser guard dog. I think it still deserves to be an S. Uh, you don't absolutely need it, but man, is it fucking good. It is an absolute slaying machine. Uh, for those that are going to, you know, get into the comments immediately and say that, well, it's just killing me and my teammates too often. You can, in fact, control it more than you think, uh, especially if it's killing you. If it's shooting you through the side of your head, if you actually turn to face that enemy that it's shooting at, it will rotate around with you because it's always going to try and hover over your right shoulder. So if you're standing still and it's shooting at you all of a sudden, just turn. Turn your camera towards it to face it, and it will stop doing that, right? Because And you should probably be worrying about that too, that thing in front of you. So if you're finding yourself dying a lot, Try to pay attention a little bit more to where it's aiming. Uh, it, it'll, it'll stop doing that if you do that. Uh, going into the next one is the guard dog uh, with the liberator. I'm going to put in C tier now. It used to be in blah. I like that they fixed a little bit more of the ammo economy issues, but I keep saying it on stream. Just give it medium pen. Let it breathe by itself. Uh, it should do its own special thing rather than just trying to compete against the laser guard dog rover i, I just uh just give a medium pen i think it would immediately go to b or even a tier to some degree uh because it could start like dealing with the enemies that literally the laser guard dog can't deal with uh yeah arrowhead please fix uh i think the uh <laughs> i think the uh the shield the blessing shield is just trolling it's it's just not a good pick it doesn't prevent you from getting hit by pretty much anything other than like foul spewers and now that i guess they do less you know i guess foul spewers but you can't reliably know that the boss spewer is going to be on the map unless you've alt f forward and know that they're already in that map seed so i do not recommend in any circumstances other than just having fun or trolling uh to use it uh if if they made it so enemies couldn't hit through it like like a hunter would like parry off of it or like a stalker wouldn't be able to penetrate it or something like that that'd be really cool you could be like a tank in a way it'd be kind of cool while shooting at it i would love that but until they add that functionality it is not a good choice i cannot recommend it uh spy backpack i think is like a middle a it is a solid pick it enhances a lot of weapons uh and it helps your team quite a bit uh, so like weapons like the grenade launcher or the flamethrower really benefit from it. Not because the flamethrower might have a bad ammo economy, but you need more stims, especially after the changes. Grenade launcher definitely gets a huge boon having that on your back. Uh, so you don't have to scavenge nearly as much ammunition around the map. So I really like the spy backpack. If you're not bringing another backpack, do consider it. But remember, there are a lot of stratagems out there that are very useful in uh, hell dives. So maybe having one teammate that's willing to take that for the team, it's very very valuable uh i'm gonna put the uh, jetpack middle b it's a fun useful stratagem uh for getting out of sticky situations or finding high ground it, very fast uh the only issue is you have to take that over another stratagem that could help you in more situations uh especially when you start learning the maps more you'll feel like you don't need the the jetpack as much because you'll start to know which rocks you can easily jump on top of or like clamber up and which ends you can't or you'll find a strategy to get up there uh, i really like it um for like maybe some uh sentry gameplay if you know a certain rock formation that you can throw sentries on you know quickly getting up there throwing your sentries on it and then like using that high ground very useful but i have a hard time putting it higher just because it's more of a niche pick 
uh, for certain players. Uh, it can make some very fun plays, though. With it. Okay, going into the mech. Uh, I, I'm having a hard time positioning it for bugs. Uh, I previously put it like A plus S minus just because it was so freaking good with its missiles. But after the recent change to its missiles, you probably notice that the missiles aren't working properly and they like don't aim. They don't go where you're aiming all the time. It's because the rocket pod has been changed to not so you don't shoot yourself when you're turning too fast to the right. So it's always based where the rocket pod is facing, but it has no swivel and it only has uh elevation changes with very little depression so you can't really aim down too much so for that reason the rockets don't reliably go where you want so you have to compensate for that happening so you often have to add, aim very far to the left or right of an enemy to compensate for where the rocket pod is at any given time uh, for that reason i want to put it like low a minus it's still like very good from the gatling arm perspective and if you get good with it uh you can kill a lot of enemies with the rockets, but until they fix the rocket pod issue, I can't really recommend using a high any higher because it's a high risk, high reward stratagem. And if you're not getting absolute maximum out of it, that 10 minute cooldown or you know 12 and a half minutes, 25% uh, increase, it, it's hard to justify all the time, you know? All right, so going into support weapons, we're gonna start with the MG43. Uh, I think it's a middle C. It's okay, but its ammo economy is not great. Uh, I just, I wish it had a better ammo economy, uh, especially now that the new MG exists and it has even better penetration and it can deal with things like uh, uh, streaker nests at a distance. You can, you can in fact shoot at a streaker nest in a distance with the heavy MG or, um, you know, going under a ball titan and you can in fact kill a ball titan with the HMG. Uh, the fire rate, uh, and it's a little more controllable and you can shoot it from hip fire, but the ammo economy of it is not as strong as the HMG. So I have a hard time putting it any higher than C. I'm sure there's going to be some lovers of it out there, but it definitely needs some like TLC and love as far as the ammo economy department before I put it any higher because it's always going to be competing with things like the stalwart. It's always going to be competing things with the, uh, the arc thrower and so on and so forth. Okay, uh, going on to the AMR. I think the AMR is like bleh like a high bleh. I, I like that they buffed it, but it doesn't really do anything special in bug missions. It Basically, you could just use a Dominator and it would work very similar to an AMR. It just takes two shots instead of one, right? Bile Spears, for instance, two shots. Uh, taking out a Charger, it takes, I think, like five to six shots of the AMR. You're not using it for that reason. You could go underneath a Bile Titan and shoot at its belly, but, like, you're not doing that. Uh, Brood Commanders, yeah, you can one-tap them, but just use a Dominator if you want that usage. I, I just have a really hard time recommending it for bugs. I think it's insanely bleh, but it is decent, especially with its 30% buff, but I don't recommend using it. Uh... I'm going to put the stalwart in C tier, maybe C plus. Uh, it really is just a good primary, but because of the prevalence of the sickle, the sickle has an 83 round magazine, theoretically. Uh, if you're just firing it, even if you let it cool down a little bit more, it has an unlimited magazine if you're doing that. Uh, because it doesn't have medium pen, I have a hard time putting it anywhere higher, even though it has, you know, reload on the move and it has a slightly better ammo economy because of that. I just have a hard time competing against things like the rover, right? If you want to deal with the same things that the, uh, the stalwart does, you can just bring the rover. The rover will kill it while you're killing other things or doing other things. It's just more efficient, right? You don't have to hold the weapon out for the, the rover to do its work. So for that reason, I'm going to put the stalwart middle C. Uh, I do hope that they maybe give it a little bit more love, maybe... If they give a medium armor pen, then all of a sudden the MG43 dies. So I don't know how much more they can do it. I think it's a great weapon for lower tiers or for a person that just really likes it for fun. But when comparing it to the larger scale of stratagems, it's hard for me to recommend. EATs. EATs have been in a, a weird spot. It went from being absolute S tier in my last tier list to now dropping down a little bit, just like it was before. I... I still think they're fantastic, but I don't think you're going to bring them nearly as often uh, unless you're using a stratagem that like combos well with it in a way. So like I could see someone that's using an autocannon that wants to deal with charges and ball titans more efficiently. It doesn't want to bring like 500 kg or railgun. You know, you bring the EATs, you quickly take off the 
auto cannon, shoot an EAT, and so on and so forth. So I think it's fantastic for that reason. But if you want to be the AT guy, you just bring the Quasar. The Quasar kind of just does it way better because every 10 seconds you get essentially an EAT that you can just shoot. You don't have to worry about the stratagem call in time. You don't have to worry about the cooldown time on it uh, other than the 10 seconds. Uh, yeah, and for that reason, I believe the Quasar deserves to be an S tier. Uh, it is absolutely insane uh, as like a bug killing machine. I think it's fantastic. It deals with Bile Titans chargers really effectively. And because it has a limited ammo, you can just shoot it at random things when those other enemies aren't there, right? So, you know, using your primary weapon, oh, there's a Bile Spirit. I don't have any nades left. Let me shoot a Quasar at it, you know? It's quite good for that. It's very strong for those reasons. Auto Cannon. I know there's going to be people that are not happy with me putting in the A plus uh, territory, but it's because it doesn't deal with heavy armor as much as I would like to, and it doesn't deal with ad clear as well as I would like to. It's in this like middle ground where it's good against like brood commanders, ball spewers, and like, and it does like all right against other things. Like it can deal with warriors and uh, other things, but you won't always be using it especially now that the Dominator exists and it's in such a good state that a lot of the things that the autocannon is going to be killing at the lower tier, the Dominator can do as a primary weapon. Yet, it, it is still very good against Streaker Nest, which is why it's here. It's still very good against bug clearing, or uh, bug hole clearing. It's still good against some objectives at far range. I, I still really like it and it's a fantastic choice, but remember, you have to take a backpack slot away, so you're losing out on a rover and you're probably going to want to bring a, uh, a primary weapon that pairs well with it so like a sickle because you're probably not going to be using this thing against hunters and so on and so forth right you're probably going to be using it against that like middle tier area of enemy uh if all of a sudden the auto cannon was better against chargers or better against bile titans you know this would absolutely go into s tier but without that i don't think it really deserves to be any higher okay recoilless uh has seen uh, an absolute downgrade unfortunately because of the quasar uh the quasar really just does it better it, it's in that c territory because it's absolute niche it does one thing and one thing very well if you have a puppy dog that follows you around with a backpack it has really high damage per second uh, against those heavy armor targets if you have a like just some guy walking around following you but if that guy decides to not follow you anymore or dies you can only take one shot which i don't like so and you're forcing your teammate to like play a way that they might not like to play or there you have to give up a backpack slot for you. I, I I really wish they would change it so you have the recoil rifle and the backpack on and a teammate can just walk up to you and help you reload. That would actually make the recoilless far better. Like probably go even into A tier even because of that reason alone. Um, and until they do that, I think it's just a very niche, very niche weapon. Even though it got that economy buff, I don't think it really moves the needle too much. Flamethrower has been having an interesting one lately. Uh, I think it's dropped down to B tier recently just because you have the Quasar to deal with chargers and you're dealing so much self damage at the moment uh, with the fire damage. And we learned about the dot damage. So um, luckily it doesn't affect the stream of fire. It only affects the fire you put on the ground and the fire you leave on an enemy when they're like burning, right? So the dot damage buff if, is happening here, but it's more of in that fun territory until they fix the bug problem. And maybe they make it better against other things. Like, if Bile Spewers are on the map, I hate having a Flamethrower because I'm at the same engagement distance as them. And I'm doing so much self-damage. Uh, another thing that could be really useful is if they eventually give us fire-resistant armor. That would also help. Uh, but yeah, the, the fire damage uh, increase over time is both a blessing and a curse. Uh, really feel bad for it. Uh, HMG, uh, I want to put like a B minus on. I think it's pretty good in situations and I like that it has a little bit more utility. Um, if you like put it down to like 450 RPM and you're like pretty good at tap firing and you're used to the, um, the change with the, um, with the, uh, the red dot, the, the red dot is not working properly, by the way, just sh you basically shoot and put the red dot above the target because the bullets are going to happen uh, happen to land below, even at any range. Uh, I think it deserves to be B minus, maybe C plus. I'm just going to put it in B minus because it has a little bit more utility against Shrieker Nest. Uh, each magazine uh, effectively kills a Shrieker Nest, which is useful. You know, you can sit at 150 meters, go prone, and just lay into it. It's kind of useful for that, which is nice. 
Uh, Railgun has been having like a hard time as well. I think it's a middle B uh, stratagem at the moment, uh, especially with the Dominator uh, being very prevalent against medium armored targets. Uh, I don't see you really wanting to bring it versus Chargers. It can do chip damage versus Bile Titans, but man, do they need to give this thing a little bit of help. I don't think it needs to go all the way back to the way it was when it was two-legging a Charger, but I think if, let's say, you could two-leg a Charger if they were 90 percentile shots, or you could take out the head in two shots at 90% charge, I think that'd be really freaking cool. Uh, and it would probably go back up to A tier for that reason, and it would be like a high-risk or high-skill weapon, high-risk, high-reward uh, for that. Spear, trolling. Uh, until they can fix the tracking issues, I, I just... I get frustrated using it because like it'll track the most ridiculous long range shit sometimes. And other times when you need it to work, there's a ball Titan coming out of a bug breach. It just won't fucking do anything. So it's even worse than having like a recoilless because you're wasting all of this time trying to track and it just won't fucking track, you know, or a, or a brute commander is walking between the legs of a ball Titan that you're trying to track onto and it's tracking the bile Titan. Or sorry, the, the Brood Commander. And you're just like yelling at the screen. You're like, why is it doing that? Like, it's it's very frustrating. Uh, I really hope that they can fix the tracking issue with it. If they do, the recent buff to its ammo economy, getting two rockets per resupply, whoo, it's going to be a beast if they can fix the tracking. Like, I think it immediately goes up to like A plus, maybe S minus tier if they can fix the tracking. Like, oh my God, it's going to be great. Uh, like really good it won't be like maybe as good as the quasar because uh it doesn't consistently one shot chargers unless it hits the face which it usually hits their back and doesn't one shot them but uh yeah like it would be really fucking good if they can change that tracking arc thrower has seen a buff and a nerf uh it lost a bunch of range and it lost some fire rate which i thought was very extreme but it gained stagger which for many people will probably be a huge buff because uh, I'm sure we've all been in those situations where you've been zapping a Brood Commander and you take off the head of the Brood Commander and then he just rushes you down and double taps you in the head. And you're like, oh, this is so annoying. Now that doesn't happen because the Arc Thrower will stagger them back with every Arc Throw, which is really nice. And although it doesn't stagger a Charger, it slows them down, oddly enough. They lose about maybe almost 50% of their movement speed when you've zapped them. Uh, it's very interesting. Um, I, I'm having a hard time knowing exactly where to put it. I think for the moment I'll put it in like a minus, but honestly, it might even be higher. Like maybe like a tier, like I'll, maybe I'll just put it in a tier here. It's still amazing because of its ammo economy and it's a fantastic ad clear machine, but the stagger is an interesting one because although it lost DPS because of the fire rate and it lost range, it got stagger, which is actually helping it quite a bit. Uh, another little minor thing is it lost the ability to open uh, crates. I'm not sure about that, which makes me want to kind of put it a little bit lower. Uh, but maybe that's just a bug. Maybe they're going to add that back to it because it seems really weird that it's like one of the only support weapons of that kind of type that can't do it. But I guess maybe it's to make it more competitive against the machine guns that can't open it. Not sure. Uh, grenade launcher, I'm going to put in middle A. Uh, I'm going to put it actually strategically right next to supply backpack it's a good stratagem to use but it'll feel like you're constantly collecting ammo if you don't have the support backpack or the supply backpack i think the person that on your team that likes the supply backpack should be the one that also runs it with the grenade launcher they pair superbly uh because the grenade launcher's biggest downfall is that it doesn't have much ammo reserves but man when you pair it together it is incredibly good for ad clear uh bile spewers and any tier one enemies uh, tier two enemies and it effectively can deal with chargers just as effectively as a um auto cannon especially if you can uh utilize that charger bug you know where you can hit the legs after a failed uh charge at you uh, quite strong so i'm yeah i'm gonna put it right next to the the uh, support backpack for that reason uh laser cannon i'm gonna put probably right next to the the uh the rail gun i think it's kind of fitting because they kind of do very similar things I would really like to them to see uh, them do like something as far as like a higher damage per second, or maybe like it can go through heavy armor if you aim it long enough at a target. I'm not sure. It just it needs a little bit more for me to like it uh, for like general ad clear or 
uh, taking out chargers or even bile spewers and stuff like that, I feel like I would rather actually take the railgun than take the laser cannon. So if you enjoyed the tier list, please consider uh, telling me why you agree or disagree with it or, you know, drop by the Twitch stream and have a conversation with me. Also, consider dropping a uh, thumbs up on the video if you enjoyed it, thumbs down if you didn't, uh, or subscribing uh, to the channel. I will be doing updates to these tier lists over time as new stratagems are added uh, or as things change because it seems like they're doing a monthly balance patch at this point. So it seems like every month we might be doing an update video on these stratagems. So keep an eye on the channel for that. Thanks for watching. Bye, everybody.